Forty years after it was filmed, Rebel Without a Cause remains one of Hollywood's most influential classics. And it still yields new discoveries. Recent finds in the Warner Brothers stock footage vault, including screen tests and outtakes, help form a picture of a different, though no less powerful, Rebel that might have been. Originally, Rebel Without a Cause was to be shot in black and white. In this scene, Jim Stark tries to elude the gang members taunting him during a school field trip to Griffith Observatory. Legend has it that after the first three days of shooting, studio head Jack Warner decided he had a much bigger film on his hands and made the call to reshoot in Warner Color. Notice James Dean in his only on-screen appearance wearing glasses. Director Nicholas Ray quickly realized the glasses made James appear too bookish. He never appeared in glasses again. Here, half the school follows Buzz and the gang toward their altercation with Jim. The change to color, a more expensive process, meant fewer dollars to be spent on things like extras. A happy result, as the final version is far more powerful. Many have pondered the significance of the toy monkey which opens the movie. The original opening sequence shows a man arriving home with a car full of Christmas gifts. In the shadows lurks a gang of thugs waiting to pounce on their unsuspecting victim. In the ensuing struggle, the man loses his Christmas gifts, one of which, the toy monkey, winds up in the gutter, where in the final version, a drunken Jim Stark lies down and stares at it face to face. This scene, eventually cut from the film, shows a nervous Jim Stark on his first day of school, where he and Judy, played by Natalie Wood, make eye contact for the first time. Originally, a different ending was considered for the film. Notice the scene is shot in day for night, a process which allows footage shot in daylight to appear on screen as nighttime. Plato, played by Sal Minio, is shot by police and falls to his death from the observation dome. The closing of the dome's aperture was a clever, but ultimately unused, end sequence. Here's a rare screen test where the actors are introduced to one another. Corey Allen and James Dean, the film's two rivals, are positioned together for the camera. The real rivals, however, are Corey and Frank Mazzola, introduced here. Frank, uh, stick your head in with Frank was a real-life member of the L.A. Athenians, hired on as an actor and technical advisor. He and Corey had just come from a screen test where they nearly got into fisticuffs. Here, James tries to break the tension. The purpose of this test was to position James in front of the camera with other actors. The director wanted to see James in different costumes, with actors of different height and hair color. It also gave the actors the opportunity to interact with James. Okay, Jack, Greenwich, change the tennis. Jerry, come on. We know each other, Jerry Oakland, Jimmy Dean. Hi. Tommy Bernard. We have many to Jim. Hi, Tommy. 
Uh, let me hand you know it to Chuck. Mm -hmm. Will you please write Jack? Yeah, uh, Corey, watch that shit. That's right. Tommy, you should hit you I don't have my, I don't have the white shirt on there. Uh, Boots, you want to take, change places with Tommy there? Let you outside. Bruce Barton, Jimmy mm -hmm. Dean, Roberts. Corey Allen. Bruce yeah, Bruce, Robert, yeah. I'm sorry, Barton. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Ken. Ken Miller, Jimmy Dean, Corey Allen. That's right, Jim. We I fought with him shirt. once. <laughs> okay. yeah. well, let me see the, the tanker again on Jim. Nick. <laughs> Good looking coat. Thanks. Had it cleaned and burned. <laughs> Good looking hat. <laughs> what? You want? I need it. Try not. All right. Uh, uh, Stephanie and Beverly. Together? Yeah. Stephanie oh. Sidney, Beverly Long, um, Mari Allen, Jamie. How do you do? How come? How do you do? Hey, Beverly. What's that like? Kid? It's cold last night. Salmonio's screen test for the part of Plato brings the makeshift family of three together for the first time. Shot on the set created for a streetcar named Desire, this test demonstrates Sal's obvious chemistry with James and Natalie, which won him the part over an actor already cast for the role. <laughs> Get inside, Flip. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you noticed the personality splitting lately? <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hello. Oh. <laughs> How come you know so much about all this stuff? Oh, I had to go to a head shrinker. Boy, he made me remember. Did he? Then my mother said it cost too much, so she went to Hawaii instead. <laughs> well, what's your problem? Oh, I don't know. But, but I'm happy now, here with you guys. Hey, you know, I came here an awful lot of times before. Yeah? You mean when I was here? Yeah. <laughs> when I ran away. Man, I used to run away a lot when I was a kid. They'd always catch me. Who? Mom and Dad. Now that I don't have them anymore, I wish I never had run away. I used to lie in my crib at night and I'd I listened to them fight. How can you remember that far back? I can't remember yesterday, can you? Mm -hmm. Plato, where's your father now? Oh, he's dead. He was a hero in the China Sea. <laughs> it's all funny. She told me he was a big wheel in New York. <laughs> so what's the difference? You might as well be dead anyway. It's all right. Sure. Sure. 